Hi, Paul Baker here from Wild River Scrimshaw and we're going to talk about some uh, a knife that I recently finished up and before, before I talk about that knife I kind of wanted to talk about my inspiration for that knife. Um, my grandfather had a carving knife and I've got it right here and this this knife was in his kitchen and, and along with a fork and a and a uh, sharpening steel that was I as an identical set and this was in my grandfather's kitchen and this knife is kind of uh, imprinted in me and what a knife should be and um, I could tell you that just I spent hours upon hours in my granddad's kitchen and I probably slayed a million bears and uh, 10,000 pumas with this knife just sitting in the kitchen in a daydream um, and I fell in love with this knife as a, as, a, as a young boy and I always wanted to make a knife that was similar to this that had this style to it and um, but was a, a usable knife and it also would be um, historically correct so what I decided to do was to make a Searless Fowler type buoy, but put my touches on it so that it would be similar to this knife. Because looking at the way this handle is done, to me that says, I mean, it's just kind of, uh, it's just got a, a a classy touch to it where a lot of buoy knives don't. And if you look at the Searless Fowler buoy, it really did because that was a gentleman's knife. And so. What I did was I started out with the Searless Fowler blade, and I wanted to keep in, in uh, a historically correct knife. Now the Searless Fowler uh, was was from the 1830s. Um, Resin Reason Bowie uh, commissioned, I believe his name was George Searless, was the blacksmith to make the Searless Fowler blade. And so what I've done is I've patterned my blade after the Searless Fowler blade, but then I kind of put my own touches to it. Um, on the, rather than doing a sheath, what I did was a scabbard. And not only did I do a scabbard, but I did a scabbard with a frog. So in keeping with tradition uh, in the 1830s, if you were riding in a coach, you could remove your sidearm while it was sheathed in the scabbard like such and this would still be on your waistcoat or your belt and you could remove for a comfortable ride in your carriage or sitting down in the parlor with your lady whatever it would be this was really uh, patterned after a gentleman's knife and so this is a frog and this is the scabbard um, and I used uh, eight ounce leather to do this and tooled them both and hand stitched. Now on the blade, I patterned my blade after the Searless Fowler and we'll take a measurement here. I believe it's the blade is nine and a quarter inches and uh, yeah nine and a quarter inches I've got on my blade. And, uh, I've got a flat grind on this blade and I actually set set the taper on this um, with a draw file. On the blade itself you can see that we've got the hole here right at the tang and uh, nowhere can I find what the reason for that hole was on the original. Um, it could have been to place a thong through it for your nobody knows because it's not like a Spanish notch and as you know uh, if you know anything about the Spanish notch nobody really knows what that was for some say it was to strip sinew um, uh, or it may have just been decoration we don't know and that's what this might be too it may have just been decoration um, only the man that made the original could probably tell you why he placed that hole there so on this one we got a, a blade out of 5160 steel. Um, it measures it measures uh, 
a little over nine and a quarter or nine and a quarter inches and we've got um, an inch and a half across and three sixteenths thick um, and it's razor sharp uh, the guard as you can see it's got the oval guard that really doesn't go past the blade um, and that's made out of steel as well um, silver soldered in place and it's blued steel then we've got the ferrule here and this ferrule is uh, nickel silver and it turned and then after that we've got bison horn and then of course this is hippo tusk and hopefully we're picking the colors up here in this tusk um, and I didn't want to polish out the whole tusk and take the uh, this has got a lot of character in it the lines and the grooves that are in this tusk and I, I, I could have sanded it out smooth and polished it out um, as you can see right here this is just smooth and polished right here where it makes the transition and I could have done that with the whole thing but I just felt like it needed to be left the way it was in its in its own uh, with the grooves and it just gives it a lot of character and then back here at the pommel we've got blued steel again and uh, it's been fitted to the tusk and blued and um, the overall length on this we're looking at uh, just over 14 and a quarter inches on the blade uh, as everybody knows uh, uh, I'm willing to as you can see it just shaves the hair right off just made my hand bald there razor sharp uh, we've got the wild river signature the w so anyway i was really happy with the way this blade turned out and as you can see it does bear some similarities to my grandfather's kitchen carving knife. You can see this knife and lots of my other work at wildriverscrimshaw.webs.com and you can also find us on the Facebook under Wild River Scrimshaw. Well, thanks again. See you next time.